everybody can do overhead pressing. Everybody. You know, the general population, whoever you ask, anybody on the street, you walk up to them, you're like, can you do an overhead press with a said weight, whatever, you know, they'll be able to do something. Uh, people at my hospital, chronically unwell patients who can't, you know, basically walk, everyone can kind of do an overhead press, you know, providing that they have, you know, abled arms and whatever. Um, but how many people can do an overhead press while in an ATG position? That is, I feel like, in a very, like in a very, very advanced skill. It's a skill that not a lot of people can do. I mean, I would say, not a lot of people can get into an ATG position, right? So that will basically chop half of the population of the earth out of the picture instantly, probably even more. How many people can actually squat ATG with their heels flat on the ground? Not a lot of people. And now out of that half of the population that we're just kind of assuming, probably even more than that, uh, how many people can actually do an overhead press while in an ATG position? It's such an elite skill. It's kind of like... I don't know. I would have to think about it a little bit more, but it reminds you of the pistol squat. How many people can do a pistol squat? You know, single-legged squat. A lot of people fall over, just like they would in an overhead, uh, 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 you know, ATG overhead uh, overhead um, movement. You just it's, it takes so much mobility, stability, strength to be able to do that. It's it's phenomenal. Uh, today, I decided to add a little bit of weight onto the bar. So today started off very shaky. As you guys know, yesterday I hit the 180 front squat. Uh, didn't do a lot of work at all yesterday. Just did that and basically some singles with other exercises and went home. Uh, today I woke up and I've got this, <laughs> I've got this doms through my lower abs, under my ribs, both sides, the sides. Like my whole core is fried from doing a single damn rep of maximum front squat. Uh, I did not see this happening, man. Like that, like right now, as I'm touching my obliques, my sides, it hurts. I can't take a full breath of air without having pain, right? That's how much it fried me. Now, one of you guys yesterday mentioned that you get proper doms in your upper abs when you are, you know, doing a, a, a front squatting. I, I kind of replied to that comment. For me, it's mostly upper back. And then I wake up this morning and I've got this abdominal side, you know, oblique kind of doms going on. Uh, so I came in today and, you know, if you can't brace, you you can't really do anything really, you know. So I worked up to somehow I got to 160 on the front squat. I wasn't really happy with that. I just didn't really have core strength. Did the same thing in the back squat and then I went, okay, clearly I, I don't want to deadlift, hell no, with, with the amount of bracing that I can do. So I went, okay, let's do some Olympic lifting. It's been probably three days now, four days that I haven't done Olympic weight lifting because I'm trying to, I'm trying to kind of deload and do minimal work, I don't want to get my heart rate elevated, I don't want to, you know, all that kind of stuff. Today was an opportunity, you know, I'm weak, you know, and I'm not fully recovered, so let's let's do some early lifting. I ended up having quite a lot of fun, uh, so I started off with overhead squatting, and I was kind of having trouble to get into the position, like it's been three or four days, and I'm like, man, like the shoulders are already going back to normal mobility for everyday life, which is not a lot, um, so it took me quite a long time to kind of loosen up the shoulders, I was using the shoulder dislocates with the band that I've got. And I did a few sets of that, uh, a few sets of 10, and then I started doing the snatch balance exercise. Uh, started off with the barbell, did a whole bunch of those. And then I thought to myself, let's add a little bit of weight. I just want to know how it feels to have weight on the bar. Because, you know, the bar is heavy, right? It's plenty heavy. But when you have extra weight on the bar, you kind of, you have a different relationship with different weights, right? You can't get away with some of the things that you can get away with a lot of weight. It's kind of like when you're squatting. You know, when you're squatting body weight, uh, it's a lot different than when you're squatting 70% of your max. It's just a different relationship. You can't deviate away from the midline, you know, like you can't shift that barbell too far forward. Otherwise, you're going to fall, you know, down, basically. You're going to lose your balance. So that's what I really wanted to get out of this. I, I wanted to get... A feel of what it what it feels like to have a bit more weight on the bar and, and how it feels to be overhead. Obviously, the concern is for me, you know, if I overcook it, I'm going to have to drop the bar. I'm happy dropping it forward, but backwards, I feel like I'm not ready for that. So the whole time I was doing this, I was like, okay, whatever you do, just don't make sure that the bar doesn't go back. So, you know, if you lose it, lose it forward. 
And I just, I was kind of going with sets of five, right? You know, do the bar build. And then I was going with these tiny, tiny weenie <laughs> plates on the bar. It kind of looks funny when you put, you know, 1.25 kilo plate on one side of the bar. It's like, if you're going to do that, I might as well step away from the, from the, from the squat rack, from the, from the platform. But anyway, I did that. So I did, I went up in five kilos. So I did the barbell for 20 kilos, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. That's where I left it at. Uh, and at that point, I was kind of pushing my shoulder stability, my shoulder mobility. Uh, at that point, I was like, okay, that's enough. Uh, I'm kind of losing confidence here. Uh, it's kind of scary. Obviously, I can squat a lot of weight, right? A lot more than that. So when you kind of do the, the, the squat jerk business, like the, when you like you know throw the bar up off your shoulders with your legs, you know the bar becomes weightless for a second. But then the trick is you got to be able to catch that in an overhead position. And then you have to kind of catch it in a, not an ATG position, but some sort of a squat. And that's the difficulty here. It is very, very difficult. It's an advanced skill to be able to be in an ATG position and then have a barbell of overhead you know, it, it's it's something else. Um, you know, as I was doing it, I thought to myself, like, you know, powerlifting movements are relatively, you know, basic. And I think most of the general population can do that. You know, squat to parallel, pick something off the ground in the form of a deadlift, and then lay down on a bed and do a pressing motion, right? A bench press. So a lot of people can do that. Olympic weightlifting is not relatable to the general population. Like, I never... So somebody like me who spent a lot of time training with a barbell, I never had an appreciation of what it is to hold an empty barbell in that snatch grip overhead position. It humbled me. I never had a like a I never had a feeling of what it's like. I just thought oh, I was just an empty barbell. How about can it be? So the general population, when they see somebody snatch 200 kilos, of course, a lot of people will be like, that's a lot of weight. But somebody like me who has a relationship with 20 kilos over my head or now 45 kilos over my head, 200 kilos feels impossible. Like this is, this is not humanly possible for me in my lifetime to do that. But it, that's kind of how it feels for like a general, a member of the general public who doesn't have like that relationship with weight. Um, maybe there's more relatability with powerlifting because the buys. You're just kind of pulling the bar. It's not It's not a speed sport. It's not a power sport. As, as funny as that sounds, because it's called powerlifting. I don't know who came up with that thing. Because really, Olympic weightlifting is power development, powerlifting. Um, so, you know, I remember seeing these weights five, ten years ago, seeing 160 kilo snatch, 140 kilo snatch. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, like, well I just deadlifted 150 kilos the other day. That was kind of the thinking four, five, five years ago, whatever, uh, ten years ago. It's like, I know how, what, what, you know, two and a half plates feels like. Snatching, it's not that impressive, right? Because I never tried it. But then you try it with empty bar, you're like, God, oh, that is difficult. Overhead uh, positioning of the bar is something else. Um, it's kind of like the front squat in the sense that, you know, you feel like it's just a quad exercise. Uh, but there's so much going on, you know, the, if you lean forward, you basically fail. Like the 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 physics side of it, the the leverages quickly add up against you. You drop the bar. Uh, Olympic weightlifting is kind of like that. You have to have precision. You have to have accuracy in your movement. It's not just about muscling the thing up. You need to be very very careful where that bar path is. Otherwise, you know you're not going to be able to exert the amount of force that you would like to. Um, this is where I've heard a few people say that. You know, Lasha, obviously, he's a bear of a man and he's very, very strong. But there's better squatters out there. And I'm sure there are better deadlifters out there than him. But there are no better weightlifters than him. So he has the ability, the skill, you know, the, the just he's put the best package together. Strength, mobility, speed, you know, all of that stuff. That's what makes Olympic weightlifting. And that, that to me, is really, really attractive because... It kind of mimics my original sport, which was basketball. You know, yes, there are people that I played with who could jump over me. There are people who were much bigger than me. Um, but I, I could beat them because I could shoot better. I understood the game better. I could send them the other way with a simple jab step or a, or a simple body 
feint or, or, or just a head fake or a ball fake. I could send them the other way. It's a skill dominated activity. And that to me is so freaking attractive, man, because a lot of us are born into this world with various different degrees of natural ability, physical abilities, right? No matter what I do, I can't look like some of the people at the top of powerlifting or the top of Olympic weightlifting. I just, I don't have those physical attributes. But when it comes to skill, I feel like it's a much better kind of level playing field. Um, sure, you know, no matter how much I practice, I probably can't be like Steph Curry. But what if I spent twice the time that Steph Curry spent shooting the ball? Now, I, I, it's almost like it feels like I can get there. You know, I just never spend the time, right? But if I spend all the time I want in the gym squatting and deadlifting, I'm going to never get near Lou and Tian Tao and Klockholm and Clarence Kennedy because there's so many other things involved. Like they are basically the one percenters of the general population. Like they are gifted in, in the way they are. And I, and I really, really don't like the, the talk of genetics. But when it comes to skill, genetics has like a less of a weighing, right? Um, that's how it feels. Now, obviously, when I think about Messi, when I think about some of these guys who are like gifted in, in that sport, obviously, skill also has like a genetic component to it, the way you're kind of made up. You know, obviously, I'll never be able to dribble through a crowd like Messi, no matter how much I try. But that's because some of those physical attributes are mixed in with the skills, right? He's small, he's agile, he's just, his dexterity through the roof and all of that. But simple act of shooting a basketball, I'm like, well, shit, man. Like, if I put up 10,000 shots every single day, I'll be pretty good at shooting, right? That's how I look at weightlifting in a sense. I might not be the strongest guy out there, but if I keep working at that bar path, if I keep squeezing out those reps one after the other, I might basically sque max out the strength, the physical attributes that I have in the sport through skill. And that's kind of, it almost adds like a fourth dimension to powerlifting. Of course, I, I'm not saying powerlifting is, you know, there's no skill. Of course, deadlift is very, very technical. Squatting is very, very technical. But it's nothing like Olympic weightlifting. Um, and I think that's why I have this like pool. I mean, I spent like, I don't know how much I spent, like 45 minutes with, with Olympic weightlifting today. Um, yeah, doing these things. And I really wanted to add more time and more time. And I'm like, okay, I got to go home, man. Like, I can't do this. And I remember having those same feelings on the basketball court. It's like, oh, one more shot, one more shot. I would often say to myself, okay, before I go home, before I can go home, I need to hit 10 free throws in a row, 10 free throws. And it used to be all sorts of things. It used to be like, okay, I got to hit five uh, uh, three-pointers from each corner. These types of things. It's like all of a sudden, like you're going home two hours later because you can't hit 10 uh, threes in a row, right? Um, that to me just sucks me in, man. It sucks me in. You know, uh, it kind of feeds into that whole grease in the groove idea now, grease in the groove essentially is skill acquisition in the you know in applied to a strength you know sport or a strength ability exercise that's what grease in the groove is man grease in the groove is a skill well olympic weightlifting is also a skill much more than powerlifting and then you could say that basketball is also another skill right i don't know i have to think about it what's more how much uh, is basketball more skilled than olympic weightlifting probably is I mean, I don't know. You know, it's hard to kind of do these things, but it's fun. It is fun. One of you guys asked me the other day, you know, have you given up Olympic weightlifting? And I'm like, no, man, I haven't. I really enjoy it. Um, it's something really, really cool. It appeals to me because of the whole skill aspect to it. Um, so I'll definitely continue to do it. Uh, my only concern, obviously, is safety. You know, basketball, there's no safety risk. It's not like this. This there's a whole bunch of prerequisites that you need to have. Shoulder mobility. Like, like I said, it's been like three or four days. I haven't done any of this overhead mobility stuff. None of the shoulder dislocates. And already I'm like, damn, the left shoulder, man, it's not happy being in this position no more. It's, it's so quickly lost. It's, it's really weird, man. Um, because how many times throughout the day do I do that motion? Like in my everyday kind of life. You don't do that. Like, I don't know. Like, you might be a painter or a roofer or something like this, and you spend a lot of time in that position, but I don't. And so, four days, you know, four times 24, that's a lot of hours without doing a skill. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm back at it. I'm back at it. I put the weight on the bar. It kind of makes me feel like I'm a proper weightlifter, although I'm still very kind of sloppy and not very good. 
Um, but that's that's what I love about it. Today, I, I, I don't have any strength about me. Uh, simply, I don't have anything left. My core is gone. So on days like this, I can come in and still shoot my free throws. That's literally what I'm thinking. You know, a lot of people might walk past me in the gym and be like, what the hell is this guy doing, man? He's got like 1.25 kilo plates on the bar. You know, how funny does that look? But to me, in my mind, I'm just shooting from three throws, man. I don't have to be doing a windmill reverse dunk every single time you see me on the court. I don't want to do that. I'm shooting my free throws. Bang. Bang. That's a really cool thing about it. I've got a name to mention in this video. Uh, a, a fella by the name of Brendan PJ. Um, appreciate you, man. Uh, in the last two videos, I've had three names pop up. So that's an amazing, amazing feeling. Thank you for doing this. Thank you, everyone else in the, in the, in the, in the list for doing this. Man, this is like the fifth page of names, man. It's crazy stuff, man. Absolutely crazy stuff. So uh, really good feeling. Really appreciate all of you guys in the comments, in the DMs. Um, means a lot. Now, in a couple of hours, uh, Pete Rubish and I have uh, supposed to do a bit of a podcast. Uh, we've tried the you know, last few weeks to kind of get on the same page, but there's like 12 and a half hour difference uh, between where he lives and where I live. So it's kind of been tricky. So my nighttime is his basically early morning. So anyway, so hopefully it kind of happens tonight. So look forward to that video um, in the next, uh, probably, I don't know, week or something like that. I'm not sure when he's going to release this. But really pumped to kind of uh, have a chat to Pete. Uh, Pete's somebody that I've, man, I've, I've, I've seen him for like, I don't know how long, like 10, 15 years I've been watching him. Maybe not 15, 10 years. Ever since I got into learning how to do deadlift, I saw him and I was like, wow, man, what an absolute unit. Um, he's honest. He's open. There's no shadiness about him. There's no fakeness about him. He says it how it is. So it's an absolute pleasure. I'm actually quite excited to talk to him. But anyway, guys, that's, that's all I got for you today. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.